Ow. It's <laughs> neck, come on. Hello, it's Jason here from Custom Cans, and uh, as you may or may not know, we sell a lot of Sennheiser HC25s, usually custom ones, but we also sell all the spares and accessories and things like that, and I thought it'd be useful just to put together a guide for people, because there's often mistakes that people make when they're rebuilding these, so we'll sell them some parts and put them on slightly wrong, and uh, uh, it just means that they fall apart again quite quickly. So we'll go through some quick tips and tricks for servicing and rebuilding these things. I'm going to put chapters down below, so you can skip straight to the chapter that you need, so if you change, need to change a cable or pads or whatever, skip to the chapter it'll show you how to do it now then these things are incredibly easy to pull apart if you have a look at our other videos we've got other videos on basically pulling these apart this one's more to do with putting them together but I thought it might be interesting just to show you how easy they are to pull apart because I've, I've done it thousands of times it's, it's easy for me I've done it dangling from the ceiling I've done it blindfolded uh, but uh, I thought you know what uh, let's mix it up a little bit let's make it a bit more interesting a bit more difficult for me and uh, Feel free to skip ahead, but if you want to see someone trying to pull a pair of these apart blindfolded while being shot repeatedly with Nerf guns, then uh, you might want to watch the next few minutes. <laughs> I've tried it blindfold before, and uh, that, that's okay. I can do that because uh, I think you can concentrate and you can kind of do it by sense of touch. But I thought maybe it might be interesting to see if I could do it with a bit of distraction. So I've got the boys here with some Nerf guns ready to Nerf out on <laughs> on this. And we'll see if I can do it blindfold while being shot with Nerf guns. Just, just, to, just to show how easy it is. It's an easy thing to do, he says, hoping not to fail. Um, anyway, for this, you will need a small flathead screwdriver to lever the driver open, a large flathead screwdriver to undo the hinges, and a T6 screwdriver. And if you are attempting this blindfold while being shot with Nerf guns, I recommend uh, attaching them all to a piece of string so you don't lose them. I'm 97% certain I can do this, but uh, if I can't, it'll be, uh, be good for video. So, uh, just hold. All right, I have my screwdrivers. All right, screwdrivers, check. H25s, check. Quick flex. Let's just... Uh, oh, boom, world record. Right, okay, commence. Ah! God damn! This is a terrible idea! Oh, who got me, like, right in the eyeball? All right, okay, so initially, get the pads off. Ah! Uh, release the cable from the top here. Okay, then you're gonna need. Ah! You're gonna need your. Ow, oh, Jesus! Ow! Oh, ah! Oh. This. This sucks! So hard! How many bullets have you got? Ow! Oh. oh, yeah, this definitely makes it harder. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Okay, all right, we're in, we're in. That one took too long. All right, so that's the driver out. That's the little foam disc out. Okay, other one. Ah, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> this was the worst idea that I ever had. Right, okay, so that's the headband off. Don't lose that. Okay, all right. Okay, the cable's out the top there. I just need to undo this with a T6. By sense of touch alone. Okay, I think they've run out of Nerf gun bullets, so I'm doing... Ah! I'm doing... <laughs> 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 oh. So I've released the cable there. I just undid one screw and then loosened the other. Just to get that out. Gonna do that screw back up so I don't lose it. There you go, just a couple of turns as I can't see. Back off. <laughs> oh my god, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. Okay, finally we have the headband. We've got the hard bit. So remove the padding that's just held on with double sided tape. Aha, losers can't aim. <laughs> Right, where's my flathead screwdriver? So, ah, the larger flathead screwdriver right in the nipple. Uh, okay, undoing that screw, remove the hinge pieces, and so then that should release. Ah, release the arm. Ah, it's the neck. Come on. Okay, come on. Oh, this is too much. Okay, undoing. Oh, that one just glanced past yeah, my eye. Really <laughs> Luckily, I use my force fit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> ah! Right, and that is dismantled. And that is how you do it, yo. Oh my god. Okay, everyone, cease fire. Cease fire. Ah, ah. <laughs> 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 I haven't got eye protection on now. God damn it. Ah. Oh, shit. Well, oh my god! <laughs> Everything's covered in nerf gun bullets. <laughs> ah, so anyway, yeah, that's basically <laughs> how you get the part. Getting a part, pretty easy. Now we'll do the hard bit, a bit more serious. We'll do the chapters now. I'll show you how to put it back together because getting the hinges on that kind of stuff, it's a bit tricky. So we're just gonna clear off all the debris and then I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Right, so we'll start off with the headband as that's the thing that causes the most issues when people are replacing parts and stuff like that. The main headband pieces, as you can see, on one side you've got these little um, these little nubbins, these little nodules on here. They both go together on one side and you've got two arms which are different. So you've got this one which is the fixed arm and this one which is the swivel arm. So the left hand one can rotate the other one always stays centered and you can see they've got different numbers of holes in so you can't put the wrong one on the wrong side if you've lost a, a fixed arm you've got to get a fixed arm to replace it so the fixed arm the easiest way to do it i find is to put the um put the little nub in through one of the holes first then get the second one and put that on also having it open a little bit like that really helps then shut that then insert the this little nubbity piece here the hinge piece now then on the back here, there's actually a little protrusion on the back, which uh, plugs into a hole on the back of this thing. So it plugs into this hole on the back of there. Let's just get that in. So rotate this until it clicks into place. There you go, you heard it click. That's that in place. Now then on the other side, you'll notice that this, this part here isn't round. And again, the hole in the washer isn't round. It's got like a, you see that slightly rectangular hole. And if you don't get those two lined up and locked in place, the, it's never going to work properly. The hinge is going to be too loose and it's going to come undone. So that should not rotate once it's in place. So the nubbin on the other side of this holds that still, and this holds the washer still. So those parts can't rotate if they are locked in properly. Next, your screw goes in and give it a bit of a tighten. Now then you can use a coin or if you've got nails like me you can you can just do it up with a nail you don't have to have it super tight because then the headband will be too too tight but what i would recommend is probably once a month just checking the tightness on this screw just giving it a little tighten every so often just you want it tight enough so that you you know it won't go and it's you've got some stiffness to the action there you don't want it so tight that you can't open the headband or even worse you don't want to do it so tight that you uh, ruin the thread in there but yeah we get a lot of people who have the hinges or just pop off every so often because uh, they they're not checking the tightness of this screw you know it can go for years but yeah if you're the kind of person that's constantly opening and shutting there's a there's a good chance that this might loosen itself over time and at least probably once a month especially if you're a dj you need these it's worth just taking a minute just to check the tightness on that every so often because if the arm falls off halfway through a set yeah you're in a world of hurt now then the other side is much easier you can just slot that in so i definitely do this side first the side of the nubbins first then do this second side you just slide that in between the two halves then it's the same procedure we're gonna put this what is hilarious is that when we order these from sennheiser uh their order code is knob washer black <laughs> the word knob <laughs> Right, okay, uh, there we go, pop that in. So those are the arms on. We sell these arms separately. I'll stick a link in the thing. So if you do lose an arm, we sell a kit with the screw and the washer and the nub in and all the bits that you'll need to put that back together. Uh, as you can see, we've already got double-sided tape on these. Um, if you buy new head pads, if your head pads come off or they wear out, they're just held on with double-sided tape. Uh, so when they arrive, just remove the tape remove the backing and then just press those into place. If you've had them on before, you can probably see where they were, so it shouldn't be too hard to get them central, just line them up over the same place, give them a really good firm press into place in there on. But if you can't see where they were stuck on before, um, I'll probably go look, look where the logo is on the top there and just get them vaguely central. Now then you can see this pair from the factory didn't have them central. So uh, it's uh, negative points for Sennheiser. You can see they're slightly off to the left, but that I think is pretty normal there. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they use a jig to line it up. Yeah, that's the bit that seems to trip people up. They don't get these washers locked into place. 
or they don't lock this into place properly and then the whole thing falls apart. So you're looking for a bit of stiffness, it should hold its position and not be too floppy but also be able to move without bending the whole, the whole thing. So that's the kind of tightness that you're going for on those screws. Um, the ear cup, now then, it's worth noting that often people get a, a thing where they've got a loose connection and that's because they've got a bit of dirt or something in the socket. Um, so this is where the cable plugs in there. So it's normally pretty, if you've got a, an original Sennheiser cable, it should just unplug nicely like that. Some of the other brands of cable that you get, they don't cut the pins properly and they tend to get stuck in there. So, so watch out for that. But essentially if you start getting a loose connection on this and maybe you wiggle that and it gets better, what I'd advise doing is probably just try plugging this in and unplugging it four or five times and that will clear out any dirt that's in the socket hopefully and then you should be good to go. The other thing that we would do here if we were reconditioning a pair is we'd probably dip this in a bit of, probably dip this in a bit of alcohol and then plug it in a few times and just let the alcohol clean, clean off any oils and stuff that's in there because DJs they tend to have like a lot of hair product and that kind of stuff and it just seems to get in there you know like greasy oily hair product and uh, ruins the connection. Uh, yes it seems to be a particularly DJ thing you know occasionally we'll get some in for servicing and they they just covered in hair schmoo. Um, so yeah so don't don't do that. Also, if you're going to do your hair, you know, take your headphones off before you put the hair product in, I think that's... <laughs> Getting the pads on, there's, uh, there's kind of two techniques that you can use. This is, this is what we would do. We would put the foam on there and then we'd hook one side of the pad over that ridge. So you can see there, that's hooked on, that's not hooked on. Then I'd stick my finger up underneath, and just kind of do this and using my other fingers, to hold the bit that I've just done in place. Put a bit more on, like that, go around. Now then, there you go, and then, then you normally end up with just a little bit there which you can just kind of pull. And So that's, that's one way of doing an ear pad. That's the way that we do it here because once you've got the hang of it, you can do that much quicker. You know, we've got a, We've got to put together hundreds of these things and the quickest technique wins. Um, but you do need a certain amount of dexterity and uh, you might find it difficult to do that. Another thing I've noted, you see here with the socket, once you've put your new pad on, I'll probably pull that down so it's not covering the socket if you can. So when you plug in the cable, pull your pad down like that if you've already got the, the cable on because if you get the pad stuck in the hole, again, it can cause, cause connection issues over, the over time. So the other technique for putting pads on would be to turn them inside out. So get this bit, turn it inside out. Then pop your bit of foam on there. Then pop your driver on top. And then holding it in place like that, turn this back over around the edge. I don't normally do it this way, so it's going to take me a bit longer. Um, but doing it this way, I think, is easier for most people if you haven't got the hang of it. You can get it on quite quickly like that, and uh, and you have a good success rate. Whereas the other way, the other way, it can be a bit frustrating. It can come off the other side while you're doing it, that kind of thing. And then obviously, removing the pads is is much easier if you, <laughs> if you've got to get them off first. You just pop your finger inside and kind of pull, and that will come away there. Now then if you do want to get inside a driver, I recommend not get not opening this up unless you have to. But I don't know, say you're fitting one of our mass loading and damping kits or something like that. What I'd recommend is getting a thin uh, flathead screwdriver. Yeah, so you can see here there's like a little uh, gap between the outer edge and the actual driver. Poke it down there and just lever that up. And then drag it around like that and you'll hear several pops. There we go. And that's freed and you can get inside like that. So in here we've got a, a felt disc and if you're fitting one of our damping kits that's, that's where you stick the various bits of damping material and you stick the weights on the back of here. Don't really need to get into there. If you need to get into the 
Right. Hopefully you should never need to get under here. <laughs> You're in real trouble if you ever open one of these. But uh, yeah, you can basically just lever that grill up there. And that gets you into the actual driver enclosure. So here's where the springs are. So in a real emergency, if you've tried everything else, you could try pulling those springs out and giving everything a bit of a clean. But um, certainly on the newer drivers, it's pretty difficult to do that. Just pop that back in. So that's just some damping material that goes around the outside. Again, if you're doing stage two of our damping kit, you'd have to get in there. But just be very careful when you open this up, just because you can, you know, if you, if you mess around with anything in this area or poke your finger through the driver, you're going to have a bad time. Right, so that's that. So on top here we have the cable clamp. And what confuses some people is if you originally had a curly cable with your HC25, then it would have a built-in cable clamp. So it'd have a, a block attached to the cable which would screw on. Whereas if you've got a straight cable, you've got one of these things, which is a cable clamp. It's essentially a sandwich of two plastic pieces and two T6 screws. If you've got a really old pair, it will be a silver Phillips screw a slightly older pair, a black Phillips screw, and then most of the modern ones that sort of 2016 or 2012, I think, or later, I don't know. Yeah, come with these T6, T6 screws. So your cable clamp is made up of a lower part here, which has got a little square indentation. So that's the, that's the lower half, and that square indentation will fit in there. And one thing I would say, is if you've got one of these and they've become very loose on the clicking mechanism, it's clicking, it's moving up and down uh, unexpectedly, you know, without much resistance, then this plastic spring inside here might be broken. And what we've done in the past is cut a small section out of a cocktail stick, stuck that in there, put that in there. So cut a short section, put it in there. And then if you screw the screw the cable clamp in on top of that, it presses on the spring and kind of tightens up your, your clicking mechanism again. It's a bit of a ghetto fix, but uh, it saves up to replace the driver. So let's build this up. So you've got your bottom part there and then the cable goes on top. You see where the shrink tube is there? Then you put the top half on, just got the two indents for the screws there. Then you do your screws up. Again, it's the T6 screw. So, so you might have to buy one of those. It's not, not as common as a, as a Phillips or something like that. So that's the cable in there. And then you'd want to put the plug in the top. Now then what you'll notice is if you look very carefully, one of those pins is fatter than the other. So it'll only fit in one way round. It's got a big hole and a small hole in there. And you can see it's got R written there. It's got nothing written on the other side. Now then the letter will be on the outside. So you could read it like that from the side so that that's plugged in there. Right, so now you have your headband, you have your ear cup joined together. So what you'll find is that, as I said, we've got one that's fixed and one that moves. So the cable side should be on the fixed one. So pop that on first. Now that's normally the right, right ear cup, so you want to push those back so it would go behind your right ear. Just looks a bit neater. And then just pop, pop that on. You just press it, press it in and it and as I said, that's a nice firm click. If yours is clicking quite loosely, a little cocktail stick, the uh, cocktail stick trick will work. Uh, you can do that on this side as well. Um, this logo here actually comes off, and underneath you've got the same screw holes, which is why people get confused because when they buy drivers, it's left or right, and they say, "Oh, I want a right one, or oh, I want a left one." They're basically the same. Just one's got this little nameplate on it. The other side's got the got the cable clamp so you can basically just pull off your old nameplate stick it on the new driver if you have to change the driver and then yeah it's probably easiest to do the cable so what I'll do is split the headband like this move your ear cup all the way to the bottom so you've got enough length then press it into this groove there you go so you can see it goes in it's got a little right angled connect there which stops it from pulling out and then you just want to press that firmly into the groove all the way around. It kind of clips in. They've got a groove exactly the right size to allow that to clip into place. All the way around. And then you get to the other side. Again, you want to feed that through to the inside. Go around that little 90 degree thing and press that firmly into place. That's held in then. And we can pop our other ear cap on. So yeah, you see it's got a fat bit at the end there and you need to get that 
you're getting the ear cap on or off. So when you're pulling it off, you just pull it down to the end and to get it over this final bit, you just give it an extra, extra little thing to unclip it. Just pop that on there. Plug your cable in again. You want to get the L facing out. I'm going to pull the pad down as well, just so that the pad doesn't get in the hole. Pop that in there. So there you go. I hope that was uh, that was vaguely useful. That's how to service and rebuild a pair of Sennheiser HD 25s. And what's good now is I've got a video that I can just send everyone to. So whenever anyone asks, they can go to this video, this chapter. Happy days. If you have any questions, stick them in the thing. Uh, be great if you liked and subscribed. We're always dicking around with headphones here so uh, if you're into headphones it's probably, probably a good thing to do and uh, yeah anyway it's been really awesome hanging out you, you guys are great and uh, may I say you're, you're looking good today yeah just, you've done something with your hair good